Here we go. All right. Today, I'm joined by Clinton Fonseca from Sadowski & Co. in Florida. Uh, and I'm excited to uh, share the journey with you. Clinton, we met uh, May 2019. So here we are in June 2022. Three years, basically, we've gotten started. I want to take us back to pre-May or pre, pre-June 19, when we got started. Tell us about the firm. Tell us about the firm, behavior, size, shape, what it looked like back then. Uh, we were a, a, a classic general services firm um, with a, a really good, good, fantastic client base, um, but pretty good, pretty good team of staff members um, in a good market. Uh, the economy was is going great. And what, what we had done is, is we had effectively bought or finished um, exiting our uh, legacy partner who kind of founded the firm. And, and that had basically occurred uh, two years earlier. And uh, we had, for the first time, were in complete control going into uh, 2019 of the firm. So we knew we were able to do some things new that we had never done before. And um, we were searching for something really on the sales and marketing side to kind of help us out. And we felt like we knew a lot about the operations side of it and that we knew things that we could fix and everything else. And so it was, uh, we, we weren't near as profitable as we needed to be. We didn't have any direction on kind of who we were as a firm and the types of clients we wanted to serve. Um, we always knew and this is basically because the firm was 33 years old at the time. And uh, we felt like we had a Ferrari as far as a firm, but we were driving it like a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. And, and so we knew we had the talent and we had an older group of uh, people in the firm and we knew we could leverage a lot of that with our, our client base to to do more for, for them. And uh, we wanted to basically take it to the next level. And in the background, we always had the dream of taking kind of our vision on how we wanted to serve and expanding it. And there were two things we wanted to really accomplish. And one was you, you can't measure it financially, but was just kind of get back our life. Um, and that, and I really mean that from the three partners in the firm. And uh the, the three of us got along good and uh, we all had the same mission and goals about where we wanted to go. We didn't know exactly what, what to do. Um, we had a lot of bad clients that, that you know, bad, we had collection issues. We had, uh, we never had really any cash flow issues. So Clinton, but, would it be fair to say, um, uh, first of all, it was a firm, 33 years old, as you said, uh, a firm that just existed being a busy firm rather than an intentional strategic sort of operation. Zero intention, zero goals, zero planning. And it, it's almost embarrassing, but we, we didn't have the ability to do everything we wanted to do. And, 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 uh, and were the clients mainly in and around Savannah or, or where were they located? If it within about generally speaking, we're geographic and it was you know within a 200 mile radius of so got it. Got it. So um, basically, it was a traditional firm by the sound of it where the clients were within a driving radius of the firm, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yes. And three partners. Um, how, do you remember how many team members back then? How many employees we had? We had 15 people total, 15, 16, excuse me, 16 people, 16, and and um. What was the revenue? I think I'm just looking at it. I think the revenue was about 2.2, something like that. Yeah, we were like two. We, we closed out 19, about 2.3 million or so. 2.3. Okay, great. So uh, what was the trigger? So we've got a, an exiting legacy partner, as you said, uh, the year prior. But what was the trigger? Was it just you knew you had this Ferrari, you wanted to help with it? Or what was the trigger wanting to sign up and uh, for us to help you? We, we felt like, and it, now things are different since we signed up for you because we got more than what we had, what we, we were, you were able to help us with your tools a lot quicker, faster and better than we could have our, ourselves. That, that's a given, I can go into that. The, the trigger was we wanted a framework 
and we needed to be able to validate ourselves against the market. And so for right now, give or take, you got 50 people in the group and there's eight in our group. And just having the ability to go have a, a living, breathing organism of accounting firms who are all, all aligned like what we want to do and what your, your belief is for how we got into the system and what the types of firms you wanted to get in there, we're all similarly aligned. We all want to improve. We're all humble. We're all open. And we needed a framework. And, and, so, and, and the fact that you had all the, we needed the tools to know what do we work on first? What do we work on second? What do we work on third? And we had a lot of issues. I mean, we were we were full of paper. You saw that firsthand. <laughs> Processes, our turnaround was just uh, was awful. We weren't tracking things properly. Uh, financially, it was a zero. We weren't focused on the right type of work. It, it was just we knew we had a lot of room for improvement, and we were still profitable in spite of ourselves. And it it's I mean, we did thirty four. Our, our margin per partner was, I mean, we're at 34 cents on the dollar. And I mean, we're, we're never going to look back less than 60 cents on the dollar now. And let's, let's get to that. So uh, traditional firm been around a long time, exiting partner gave you the opportunity to make some changes. Um, and so fast forward three years, and there was a lot of things to change. What does it look like now? Um, financially, time, culture, attitude, give, it, give us a, a summary of what it looks like now. The, the things that are important to us is we don't work any Saturdays, no weekends, and we were a grinded out firm. Everybody worked crazy hours and not super crazy. And then during the week, particularly during busy season, I mean, we're there late grind and do it, doing all of that. And it was, um, it, it, it's not a good way to live. And, you know, you start getting into your fifties and you got family and you're wanting to do more with your life. It, it really wasn't anything to do motivated about the money. And I'm not saying a million dollars per partner didn't intrigue all of us, and um, and we're close, but uh, at least one of us is. And um, it it was uh, we wanted to get back our our life. So, so 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 what does it look like now? Give us a sense of that now. We we have one additional headcount than what we had, which is interesting relative to what we were able to do with the revenue relative to where we were when we got in to understand capacity. We knew we had capacity based upon the proof that we had done in the very beginning of getting into the program with you. And so we knew it and we, 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 we believed that. That was the, the one good thing is the three of us really believed it. We didn't know if we could pull it off or not, now we know. And so, you know, we went from 2.3 million in revenue to this year, unequivocally, we had a stretch goal of 4 million. This year, uh, our short goal was two point it was three point six million. We closed the first quarter out at just under a million in revenue. We're going to close the second quarter out at a million. We're going to get two million through the first six months in, in revenue, and we're going to be at sixty cents plus on the dollar. Wow! Which is so the financial piece just kind of like it almost like took care of itself, and we were so excited about getting back our life with and and our people, and so the recruiting side of it. I had, we had one voluntary departure in 1920, 21, and all the way to 22, we've had one. And, um, and we've added two more net headcount. And uh, both of the two net headcount we've added have both been in the, um, in the administrative area with the CEC and a business manager. And so it, it's, we're, we're actually down one producer and up another administrative person as well. So it was just kind of a flip flop and it made it a better place to work and it helps out with our recruiting and the words really just now starting to get out a little bit around our geographic area for us to be able to attract people. And, and so that, that's been a, a, a win on top of a win on top of a win relative to what we're all dealing with with, with not having enough staff. And, and what's also funny about that is the increase in revenue. So we're gonna be up. We, in, in a perfect world, if we can keep running out the year like we're doing and keep adding product in there, and, and if we can hit, even if we hit 3.6 million, we're 3.6 versus in 22 versus 2.3 or so in 19, doing 60 cents on the dollar. Mm. I mean, are you kidding? Yeah. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. The turnaround time 
it, I mean, 10 days or less, particularly on our tax work, is beautiful. I mean, we are turning it over and over and over again. And that's the CEC will set you free type thing. And so that, that was a fix that we made early on. And it smoothed. What we did was we were able to better manage our tax work. And so now you, you're not allowed to use the word busy season or tax season in our firm because we're trying to keep everything smooth throughout the throughout the year and not have these peaks and valleys and everything else. And now we're working on summer where we've got some incentive programs in place. And so we're trying to get to the point where we're not even working Fridays. So we're doing four days a week for the three months of June, July, August this year. Our, our team members know this and we've got incentives in place. So we're just trying to get more done, more efficiently, better serve the clients, better serve ourselves, get gain back our lives, and it, it, it been, it's been some hard work psychologically to get us to break through, to do things differently than we've done them before. And we've been slow on that. We, we so, haven't. So, Clinton, a question that people will be asking themselves, what awesome result financially, revenue, profit, awesome, one extra person, um, because we're focused on other metrics. A key question is about the partner's time because you can prop up profits quite easily by just getting anyone to work harder out, longer hours. You mentioned you're doing four days a week for summer. Where would the partner's time be? How has that changed, reduced or otherwise? It's, it's almost as if we work the same. And, and the old adage is we're working smarter, not harder. The gist of it is, we're not working on clients. We, 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 we're not, we have the ability to choose on working on, as long as we're giving good service, clients that don't complain, they're good clients, they want to grow, they're progressive, they, they pay, they appreciate what we're doing. Um, you get a sense of self-satisfaction professionally by working with them. Um, we kind of just eased those other clients either out or they had to conform to the way we wanted to operate and we wanted to do business. And, and we were very ginger and very good about that because we wanted to treat the, the, the clients the, the right way. But we basically gutted a lot of our um, not, not profitable um, work that was we were, we were wheels spinning and it cleared out space to focus more on the, on the better clients and new clients. What, what do you think? Um, did you sell any blocks of fees off at all? Was there a sale of fees or you just got fired some clients? How'd you do it? Um, we converted some, some clients to just, we, we build them up. And so we converted some by just pure fees. We upsold some of them. We, we, uh, we, um, we gutted about, we didn't sell any, but we were probably down, out of you know thousand individual income tax returns that we were doing at the time, we we eliminated over the course of two years about three hundred plus income tax returns that, in effect, were just creating noise in the firm, just a bunch of static and not really any. Um, it was just more work than what we were generating from it. And then what do, what, do, what do you what do you think the revenue was that you got rid of? What dollars in revenue for those 300? Right around, we got rid of in total, including some business clients, about 300 grand. We, about 300,000. We, we about 300, so essentially, that brings us back to 2.2 million to, 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 to flat. We've effectively doubled the revenue in, in, um, in three years. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And okay, let's, let's talk some detail here. Um, we've added one person. We've added uh, one left, added two in the administrative area. Uh, got that. What were the, we haven't worked any harder, if, if anything, less, right? What, what were some of the levers you've been pulling on how to get the growth and how to get the margin increase? Um, well, through growth and not having to add any headcount because we were fixing the, the workflow side of things to gain more efficiency in the in the work and then we we increased the fees uh every year we've had pretty significant increases overall in fees and uh we we really just kind of did it we didn't really notify all the clients we had a small group that we sent a letter to and did a pricing increase letter that was the cat that was 
what you'd suggested early on, we did it and it worked. Um, and, and that was part of the impetus of getting rid of the $300,000 of bad, bad clients. And then to, to be honest with you, it was the, the market, you know, we went the, the 2020 year was kind of flat for us because of COVID and everything else. And we, we there's some things I wish we'd have done differently in 2020 to generate some more revenue. I tell you, the main thing was, was we got a, we got focus with uh, our sales and marketing and hiring our sales guy. And, and our sales guy not only created activity incremental from his efforts, but what it is, is it, is it created energy and enthusiasm with everybody else because of his personality, just the fact that we have a sales guy in here, they're bringing stuff in and it changed the whole persona of the firm. And we don't make any bones about it. We want that guy to be the highest paid person in the firm. If, if possible, we're, we're very open about that. And he, he's kind of free wheel and can go do his thing. And uh, th that's been one of the better things we did. And then we flipped the switches on a lot of the electronic social media stuff that kind of helped give us a presence. I'm not saying it was directly responsible for a lot of things out there, but we just kind of did a big splash out there in our market. Um, and, and, people started calling us and our, you know, we were able to start picking and choosing with work and prioritizing things and gutting some bad accounts because we had this thing called abundance and we, we bought into it. We said, Hey, this is there, this is an abundant world, especially with the economy we had, even with the COVID co coming in there. I mean, we started thinking, Hey, this is the best business model we can possibly be in is, is public accounting. We kind of had already gotten back our life, so to speak. My, my, client hours went from Rob Martin and, and Rob Martin's hours didn't drop quite as much as mine, but my client hours dropped by 50%. I'm down 500 now. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. It, but well, my other two partners, one of them in particular, Alan, he's got to, he, he needs to work on that more and he's done a good job. We just need to keep wearing him down a little bit more. And uh, so we, we, the three of us both picked up more time, um, less client time and did a, we did a better job of delegating and manage. And it's kind of the hundred percent, 80% rule was relevant. And we all bought into that. Love it. Love it. Love it. What are some of the other big things I've got? I've got uh, four big ones written down so far, big focus on workflow efficiency, got rid of the paper. We've got capacity, uh, fee increases, um, sales and marketing person, a different mindset, a mindset of abundance, not scarcity, what are some of the other big projects you did, Clinton, that have made the dramatic difference? One of the biggest, and, we, and we, we have not measured it like we should, but we componentized, and it all stems from the, every, you, you know, as accountants and the way we're kind of wired mentally and intellectually, we all, we, and, and your people, everybody wants to do help and serve the client. So little, a lot of little things, little projects that we do for clients, we're just getting lost in the shuffle and we're billing them. You know, somebody might have 15 minutes or 30 minutes in a, in a project that in theory is worth $1,000, but we're billing $125 for it. So we componentized little projects like comfort letters to banks, personal financial statements, a cash flow analysis, uh, uh, answering a tax notice, uh, dealing with uh, um, doing a calculating the 1031 exchange on a sale of a piece of property. What's happened is we, with our CEC in conjunction with the partners, we're going, okay, client, you want this? We pop out an engagement letter. It goes to the client. They sign it. It's individually priced. It's a thousand dollars. We, we have a, you know, in our old time and billing system, which is now a pure efficiency measure of how our staff are doing literally we didn't go to the dollar an hour thing yet, or the five hundred dollars an hour thing, which is where I'd rather lean. Um, we, we, and 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 that in itself, and I'm going to measure. We talk about it a lot. Has been wonderful because we don't start the work or do the work till we have acceptance of the fee with an engagement letter. And I'm telling you, it's a hundred thousand dollars of free cash flow to our bottom line. It is it is ten thousand dollars a month, if not more. And I need to measure it because we haven't, that, that was, that was big. And then we're, we're willing to, if, if somebody doesn't want us because of price, when we're proposing on work, even on an existing client, Hey man, we're, we're, we're okay with that. We'll move on to somebody else. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Productizing services, 
uh, been diligent about upfront pricing. Uh, and, and look, Clinton, if we went through all the projects you've done, uh, it'd be a long list because the, I think the difference here with, with your firm versus others that I've seen is you get things done, right? You implement, you, you, you take it as it is and say, right, we're going to do that. And you do it and you turn up to the next meeting and it's done, right? And you get the results. So uh, love that about you guys, right? And I love the way you've built this energy into your culture as well, you know, where not just the salesperson you've got, but the, the way that you interact with your team, the energy, because I've been there, the energy is completely different to what it was three years ago. Oh my gosh, the, 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 I'll tell you what, and I don't have the, we don't have a, a monopoly on this at all, but, and, and this is huge, is, you know, we, we were talking the talk and we were trying to walk the walk and we talked a lot of talk and we really started to walk the walk with the incentives for our people. And we made some mistakes. I'm telling you, some of the incentives were, were bad. And we, we change them every quarter. And they usually surround giving our staff people if they meet certain goals. And we, I, I, I think this has been a strength of our firm. Is, and, and we've been willing to give and give and give. But it has to fit into the framework of we got to make money while we're doing it. It's got to properly serve the client. And it's got to help the, our team members improve their life and so the incentives have been far reaching but we're, we were we were trying to really target and we customized some things for for some specific individuals to drive performance and and it's time off it's it's given back so now when i hire new people they don't know the old way because we hadn't we hadn't we hadn't been there enough which is a little bit of a problem but hey you know you come work here you're going get, to get awarded days off you know, it, it, it's you're, you're potentially going to get some money and so we're trying to say, hey, y'all are along with us on this thing. Let's just hit the goals. Let's hit the targets. Let's do a good job. And the, the, the incentives are a been a boon for us. Huge. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, Clinton and the whole firm, uh, you should be celebrated. You've done an awesome job. Let's say you're meeting a firm that looked like you three years ago. What would you recommend to them if they at least have the uh, inclination to change? What would be your recommendations? And I'll tell you, I had, a, I had a discussion with a guy, really got along with him good. You know who I'm talking about, the Idaho firm. That gentleman who runs that firm, great guy. Young, yeah. he's, he's 41, 42 years old. He's got three kids married. And I was talking to him in, at, out in California when we, we met. And uh, for whatever reason, he was like a kindred spirit to me, big football fan and everything else. And so we were BSing about all that. And he says, he, he, I, he, he said, uh, he listened to what I was talking about our work hours and where we were and where we are. And I told him, I said, listen, I, and his firm's about the same size of ours, a little bit less in revenue, but he's got the same number of people. His firm's set up like ours, got kind of the mix of his work seemed to be real similar to, to ours and everything. And, he's, and I said, I said, I'm 57. I said, I got into this thing three years ago. And I said, I, I said, I wish I was where you were because if I was, if I'd done this when I was 41, 42, right now, if I didn't love public accounting so much, I'd be sitting on the beach right now. <laughs> sure. Literally, I'd be done. And so I told him, I said, our problem is we moved too slow on enacting change and having a set of guts, you know, having some guts to make the change and be willing to jump out the window and free fall, just jump out the window, just, just make the change, just do it. So there, there's comfort in the fact that you've seen other firms go through this and they're ahead of you and you're able to, you're able to just get the courage, get the thought process to say, hey man, I can do this. I would, I would move faster with the program. Absolutely. The, the CEC role was a huge game changer for us. Sales was a big game changer for us. And then just the, just, so I, I would tell people, do what you say, but every firm is so different and you, and the sequence for how one firm does things versus how we would do things. The sequencing might be a little bit different for how you do it because we absolutely did not want to crash, go backwards on profitability. We wanted to move forwards. And I think understanding abundance and your self-worth as an advisor 
and know, man, we're in a great business. We can really help people with our knowledge. And if you're out there helping people, damn, make sure you get paid for it and make sure you, you give them good service. And the, the, this is a detail, but you're getting people on ACH and we got a lot of work to do there. They're still in that mindset. It's kind of like we quit working on clients that weren't paying us. We only worked on clients that started appreciating us, gutted a bunch of uh, uh, clients, but overall is, I mean, this is, I, I can't help it, man. It's just the way we, it's just the way we think it's, I would have moved faster. And, and so I sit here and say to myself, well, what do I need to move faster on now? You know, I sit here and have to go, well, I'm in the present right now. What are, what is our, what is our next, our, our next move and our next move and our next move? Love it. Love it. Clinton, uh, as I said, congratulations. It's been an awesome three years so far. Uh, we've got much more work to do. It's now taking this business from four to whatever size you want. Um, by the way, how big or what, what's the grand plan here? What, before we wrap up, what's the grand plan? Um, grand plan is now I, I, we, we want to, I need to get three of us on the call with you and get a little bit of time with you. I, I, I kind of want to, we kind of want to treat it as if the way your model's set up and the way we're set up is uh, we want to be investors and, and uh, take money out of the ATM machine. Yeah. And, and that, that's Rob Allen and me. And the way it's componentized, where you're kind of separating out the sales, the operations, and the administrative kind of separately, I think we can do it, but we got to just make sure we bring along some people and compensate them well. So I think that's where we're going to go. We're busting our ass to get to 5 million as quick as we possibly can. And then we said we're going to kind of, kind of chill. And I think we got a couple more years to get there, but we can, we can get there. Yeah. So we go from practitioner right as a doing the running the practice to business owner running the business and step three is where we actually do ourselves out of a job as the partners and we become investors in that business and it runs itself and that is an exciting journey that we're about to embark on and and, and that that's a mindset change with us you've helped alan Karish about leap years on that one it's been Love great it. clinton thank you so much um i i do hope that this um, inspires someone to make some change and go faster like you guys have done and inspires them to uh, act and get the result you've got as well. So man, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks Rob, big time. Appreciate you big time. You too, man. All right.